Hi everyone, my name is Monica Pidel and you're currently looking at a computer screen. As we go through these files, I would like you to put yourself in the shoes of your local police officers, social workers, and homicide detectives. I say this because for my complex problem, I have chosen to focus on the never ending cycle of domestic violence. I will be researching statistics and multimodal text to conduct solutions to the global issue of domestic violence. So many victims suffer in silence because they do not believe they could leave the situation safely or even alive. There are some well-known cases of victims managing to escape their abuser in different types of ways. Some victims have left a note for someone in public asking for help. Others have called 911 and ordered a pizza, or they have used or attempted to use the hand signal for help. If you did not know, the hand gesture for help in domestic violence situations is to hold one hand up with the thumb tucked into the palm and then fold the four other fingers down, symbolically trapping the thumb by the rest of the fingers. So unfortunately, when a victim finally gains the courage to speak to someone about their abuse, they not only place themselves in danger, but those who now know of the situation and that it can't be someone that they're mutual friends with or they may tell the abuser. Some may believe it's the victim's fault for staying with the person long enough for it to get this bad. Others may seek help from authority, but that is never a guarantee that they can do as much as they would hope to do. Um, the abuser may even be manipulative enough to convince authorities that it's the victim that is actually abusing them. The whole world became aware of how that story could end with Gabby Petito's tragedy. There has to be a better way to seek justice for victims of domestic violence than just a piece of paper telling them to stay away or forcing victims to go to trial for what could be a somewhat of a decent punishment. I want to explore the options that are out there for victims wanting to seek help and how we can combat and co the complex problem of domestic violence. So about domestic violence, domestic violence is a type of abuse that usually involves a spouse or partner, but it can also be a child, um, an el elderly relative or other family members. So all demographics could benefit from this information that's in the presentation, but newly engaged or married couples is the type of audience that I believe um, would benefit the most. So domestic violence can include, but is not limited to physical violence that leads um, to injuries such as bruises or broken bones, sexual violence, threats of physical or sexual violence, and emotional abuse that may lead to depression, anxiety, or social isol isolation. As for reporting, it's hard to know exactly how common domestic violence is because people often do not report it and there is no typical victim. Violence may be found in many homes, in any home, anywhere. Victims of domestic violence can be female or male, young or old, rich or poor, socially privileged or not, and pol politically influential or without political power. Each year, the U.S. receives between 900,000 to 3 million reports of domestic violence, while many go unreported. It is estimated that over 10 million people experience domestic violence in the U.S. each year. To the left, there are some statistics on um, domestic homicide. So 72% of all murder suicides involve an intimate partner. 94 of those, 94 of those victims were women. And around 75% of domestic homicides occurred while the victim was attempting to leave the relationship or had already left the relationship. So for some statistics, globally, a total of 87,000 women were intentionally killed in 2017. More than half of them um, were killed by intimate partners or other family members, meaning that 137 women across the world are killed by a member of their own family every day. More than a third of the women intentionally killed in 2017 were killed by their current or former intimate partner or someone they would have normally expected to trust. As for national statistics, on average, nearly 20 people per minute are physically abused by an intimate partner in the United States. So during one year, this would equate to the estimated 10 million women and men who fall victim to domestic violence. With that said, one in three women and one in four men have experienced a form of domestic violence by an intimate partner. So as for Ohio State statistics in 2019, there were 76,203 law enforcement calls for domestic violence incidences. Many other incidences went unreported. In the year ending in June 2020, there was 109 individual victims of domestic violence homicide, including four children. 
So moving on to multimodal text, I will be playing a clip from The Maid that is on Netflix that demonstrates the mentality that many victims have about their abuse because they believe it could be worse or may not even believe that the type of abuse is even domestic violence. Still can't qualify you for transitional housing. There's beds at the domestic violence shelter, but uh, you said you're not DV? Yeah. I would really hate to take a bed from somebody that's been abused for real. Abused for real? What does that mean? Beaten up. Hurt. And what does fake abuse look like? Intimidation? Threats? Control? You need to call the DV hotline yourself. They'll usually send a cab around to the closest police station to pick you up. Call and say what? Help. So moving on to more multimodal texts, um, there is a really amazing TED talk out there by Leslie Morgensteiner, while domestic violence, why domestic violence victims don't leave. So this will be linked in the description. It is a 16 minute video. So that is why I will not be playing that as of right now. Um, as for social media, when it comes to domestic violence um, awareness, um, Reddit has become a platform where domestic violence victims can seek help. Facebook pages allow victims to reach out for um, assistance by using code words and phrases. Snapchat provides shelter resources for individuals who need to escape their homes due to abuse of, from their partners. And TikTok has recently become a large platform for victims to share their survivor stories, speak up um, about their active abuse, and educating victims on how to safely report their abuse. And now I'll be showing an example of a TikTok. I appreciate it. I know your mom is a great baker, so I should be good. Um, the trick is to grease the pan really well and use overripe bananas. That's my mom's tip. Okay, good to know. I can't wait to try it. So, so thanks again for the recipe. Okay. And now I have decided to put some um, famous domestic um, violence victims in here that are actually celebrities or high profile people. Um, I did this so you can understand that they can, they are just like us and no one, um, uh, everyone can fall victim of um, domestic violence. So currently there's Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard's case, Kanye West publicly harassing and threatening Kim Kardashian. Chris Brown assaulting Rihanna, and then the late Dwayne Haskins physical abuse from his wife, Evan Peters being physically assaulted by Emma Roberts, and Charlie Sheen attempting to choke uh, Brooke Mueller. And the list goes on. So for a solution, there is no permanent solution for domestic violence. I have provided preventative and combative uh, or combating um, ways that we can go about domestic violence so that you can educate yourself, share resources, keep domestic violence in the conversation, educate our future generations, pass stricter laws towards um, convicted abusers, and know and look out for signs of abuse and speak up. And then you can also lend an ear to loved ones, volunteer or donate to your local shelters, help connect victims to local resources or shelters, understand that leaving can be the most dangerous thing for a victim to do and believe the victims. So what can we do? Further funding towards domestic violence initiatives at a federal level is a major part of what can help further domestic violence initiatives. Training and ongoing education to foster effective communication between EMS professionals and victims. Strengthen community sources and availability to already defeated victims who have an awareness that they risk their um, safety even more when they try to leave. Strengthening relationships between law enforcement and minorities due to victims will stay silent due to their fear of the police. Asylum for Im immigrants due to the fact that the United States still does not recognize domestic violence as a particular social group. 
and to continue further adoption of community-based um, participatory research, which is an approach that emphasizes collaboration, shared um, decision-making and power sharing um, between researchers and community partners to bridge the gap between domestic violence and established efforts, expansions of helplines, information sharing and prevention tactics, Careful screening, or carefully screening women upon their entrance to the shelters to help create an appropriate treatment plan for them, and funding shelters and other safe accommodation options for survivors. And for the end, I just wanted to provide some help um, uh, or how to get help. So if you or someone you know has experienced relationship abuse in any form, please contact the National Domestic Hotline for free. You can text, you can call, and you can chat online. And I will also have further resources and information of domestic violence linked in the description. And these are my references. Thank you.